Pennsylvania, we uh, filed a lawsuit against the Blue Shield and Blue Cross. And we were successful in the 80s. We beat them in court and we they, they started covering chiropractic services. Well, hello, everybody. Dr. Ron Oberstein, president of Life Chiropractic College West, and welcome to another edition of our Life West Leadership Line. Today, uh, I have somebody that if you've been in practice over 20 years, um, you know this man, you know this man's name. He's done so much for chiropractic and um, uh, and probably, Lou, I could say this, one of the mis one of the most misunderstood men in chiropractic. And that's a good thing because it means that, you know, B.J. Palmer was one of the misunderstood men in chiropractic. Um, I have Dr. Lou Sportelli with us. And Lou, welcome to the Life West Leadership Line. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, it's great to have you. Um, just for our audience, I'll share with you a little bit about Lou and, and Dr. Lou. And uh, he's been in chiropractic. He graduated in 19... Uh, 19 uh, 62 from Palmer College in Davenport, immediately went to Palmer in uh, Pennsylvania, practiced there for 35 years, uh, then got involved with uh, NCMIC, a national chiropractic mutual insurance company, got on the board, became president, was traveling all over, had 11 associates. He was busy, you know, throughout his time period. One of his associates took over the practice and um, you know, and he ended up uh, retiring from NCMIC. What year was that? 19 what? 2015. 2015. And right now is president of the NCMIC Foundation. And the foundation funds over a million dollars a year into scholarships and, and grants and, you know, just different things, but all in chiropractic. And it's just amazing what they're doing. So, um it, Dr. Lou, that's a very short introduction because I could have went on about all the, the the TV shows you did and how you were fighting on Capitol Hill for chiropractic and all the things you did politically and 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 and, and you know what you've done throughout your career to really up level our profession and um, you know we'll we'll, move, we'll touch on it maybe not uh, I I just didn't want to spend all the time with the introduction and not get to the meat, you know, of it, right? And, and I think that's probably the most important thing. But I do want to start off by asking you, you know, in your years in chiropractic, because, you know, from 1962, you know, we're talking about quite a few years, how, what were some of your highlights? Like your top, if I could ask you, I, I know it's kind of like asking you, out of you don't have 11 kids, I don't believe, but if I said, what are your top three favorites? You know, you can't really pick them, but just give me the top three, like, what, you know, what do you think? Well, Ron, you know, when I'm asked that question, I, I have to reflect on the fact that I graduated in 1962. And for those of you in the audience who may not realize this, but in 1963, the AMA formed its Committee on Quackery. Now, and their goal was to contain and eliminate the chiropractic profession. Now, we didn't know this. I'm a young graduate, graduated in 62, opened my practice in 63. The AMA is out to kill us. So... All during my years of practice from 63 until the early 70s, we didn't realize what was going on because we didn't know what was happening. And because of all of that, because of the, the just the curiosity of why won't the hospital take my x-rays? Why won't they do my bl blood analysis? Why won't local physicians accept my referrals? All of that was kind of out there, but we had no context about so all of that kind of shaped my view and caused me to essentially become an advocate uh, because I recognized the injustice that was being done to our profession when we finally realized what was happening and thanks to sore throat and a, and a set of documents that we received it was hallelujah day yeah yeah but but the interesting thing was this is that you know it was insidious and it was very well planned out, you know. Absolutely. To contain and eliminate, right? And 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 it's crazy that nobody knew about it. And then, of course, you know, the Chester Whoops trial with 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 Rick Andrews and coming out of Chicago and all that stuff that took place. And and we're going to get into that, but I I think that is a highlight. What else? What, what so, well then, as 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 we realized in the early sixties, you got to remember we weren't there wasn't even a, a licensure for in all the states, 
Uh, there was no reimbursement for chiropractic in terms of most insurance companies. So as you started to see that patients coming in, I had a, obviously at that time, everybody had a cash practice <laughs> because either you, either you went into, into chiropractic and, and opened your own office and you had a cash practice because there was no other way to practice or you did something else and dropped out of the profession. And we had a lot of those. So my whole career essentially was how do we correct the, the, the things that we saw that were incorrect. One of my highlights uh, was the Pens in Pennsylvania, we uh, filed a lawsuit against the Blue Shield and Blue Cross, and we were successful. In the 80s, we beat them in court, and we, they, they started covering chiropractic services. I mean, that was a, that was a monumental uh, economic boom to the chiropractic profession, but what it also did was allowed the patients to be able to access chiropractic yeah. care. And it laid the groundwork for other states to do the same. And Absolutely. Was, or Michigan did it and, and, and all these other states to be able to gain equity in the insurance world. And our, and our viewers might not know how heavily dependent our public was on insurance back in the 80s, right? Um, yeah, they might not have any idea that, that if you didn't have insurance, you know, you know, you wouldn't even go to a doctor, right? And that's that exactly, exactly. And and but 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 I will say this now. I, I, I realize I'm an old time practitioner, Ron. So one of the things that with every with every uh, sword, there's two edges to it. And here's my here's my lament. Back in the '60s, if you practiced, you better educate your patients. You better take time to educate them about what chiropractic is, what are you doing, and so forth and so on. As the insurance became greater and greater, our education of our patients became less and less. Yeah. And I think that part of the part of the reason why we were stuck at a, at a small percentage of the population was because the pe the population didn't understand what we were doing because we didn't tell them. Yes, and and truthfully, because you know they call it the Mercedes eighties, but truthfully. You know, by not educating, these patients would leave the minute their insurance would stop, right? Exactly. So it was more dependent, which is, you know, you, and you know, it's flipped now, right? Like, you know, yeah. all our students graduate, I want to say 80% to 90% go out and do cash practices and do really well. And they'll submit super bills for their patients, but they don't want to even deal with that because, and they get people who are committed and they educate, just like you said, you know? Lou, I saw you, I, I've seen videos of you, you know, on TV advocating for chiropractic, whether it was with news people or, you know, that kind of stuff. And we're going back to the 70s, you know, and, and the 80s and stuff like that. I mean, that, hey, Ron, so you, hard. you bring back a, a memory. Um, I remember there we did one of the primetime television shows, which was the um David Suskind, back in that era, Suskind was, I mean, he was whoever it was. Well, they, they, had, they had contacted Chester Wilk and I to be on their television show. And I want to tell you something. It was a setup from day one. We walk in. We get seated in, in, in folding chairs while, while Barrett and the other guy are in a makeup room uh, getting prepared. But... Back in the 80s, and here, here's where my mind continues to go. Back in the 80s, you know, there's an old expression in the law, Ron, that says if you have the facts, you pound on the jury. If you don't have the facts, you pound on the table. Well, we didn't have a lot of facts back then because we didn't have a lot of research. And so we pounded on the table to some degree, but we used our anecdotal evidence to support the fact that chiropractic was functional. And here you fast forward to 2023, and we're amassing a phenomenal amount of positive research to support and substantiate what we do. What a wonderful, what a wonderful 40 year time span. Yeah. You know, and, and man, people don't know. I mean, I think anybody who's been in this profession for at least 30 years will remember Stephen Barrett, you know, what other people I might not. And I actually watched that. And for our viewers, if you don't know who David Suskind is, it's kind of like Oprah. I mean, maybe not. Oprah had a bigger audience because there were a lot more people in the world than Oprah was in the United States when Oprah was around. But David Suskind, everybody tuned into the David Suskind show, right? Yep. And, yep. and it was 
I mean, you know, Stephen Barrett was, I don't know. I mean, this guy started the 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 quackery you know, uh, you know, against chiropractic. Quackbusters. Quackbusters, and he was yeah. Canadian, a psychiatrist who never got licensed. I mean, all this stuff that we dug up on him. Um, but you know, this guy, I, what did we ever find out what was funding who was funding him? Oh, well, I think that that's a good point. He he would you know, he lived in the town next door to me. That's how I got involved with him um but in 1969 now think about this the ama in 63 barrett in 69 the ama must have had some inkling that they were going to be exposed so what did they do they found a shill in stephen barrett because the guy is absolutely and totally uh, a a non-communicative type of person how he got the publicity he did had to be backed and forced by the power of the AMA, as far as I'm concerned. I I have that suspicion because nobody rises to that kind of prominence with his inability. (laughs) Uh, So the bottom line is he was he was here and it was 69. So it makes perfect sense to me. And then he got on Quackbusters and so forth and and totally and completely denied everything that a chiropractic was ever uh, was ever positive for. He used to send. How about this? How would you like to live in a world where Barrett would send patients to your offices with recordings to see how you handle the patient and to whether or not you did an exam and so forth and so on, and then he'd publish his books. So it was an era, but 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 it was a good era. You know why, Ron? Because it did expose some of our own weaknesses, which needed correction. Yeah, absolutely. But Lou, I, and I really mean this, but you and Chester will, you guys wipe the floor with them. And and I I'm gonna post if you have it I'm gonna get the I, or we might have it here but I'm gonna get a copy of that and well and I want to put a posting up so people need to see this I I also saw one with Ian Grassum and in Detroit with Barrett you know but it was the exact opposite they did it at an NBC news station and they filled the room with chiropractors. And so out the whole audience was chiropractors and, <laughs> and, and chiropractic patients. And, and when Barrett walked in, he thought it was going to be exactly, you know, everybody, you know, for him. And it was at the whole different. But once again, when you share the truth and you share what chiropractic, whether it was anecdotal or not, you know, I mean, now with research, it's much easier. But when you shared the truth of chiropractic and you got people who are healing and, pe- and how chiropractic work, there's really not much no response, you know. I mean, you can't deny it, you know, and why the masses were going to chiropractic here, right? You know, exactly. And paying out of their own pocket for the for the service at that time, right? You know, they they, they were exactly they weren't and when you're paying out of your pocket, you're gonna either expect results or use your feet to walk someplace else. Right. So that's and right. that's that's why the 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 results of what chiropractic had I mean, early on, we talk about, you know, uh, George in his, in his uh, commentary, talk, uh, McAndrews talked about tractor back with his father, who was in Iowa as a farmer. And uh, the, the farmers would go to his father at, and he would, he would do this at, in the middle of the night because the farmers were afraid that their medical physician wouldn't take care of them anymore. And so George saw that. I mean, when, when we talk about some of the things that happened in this profession, there's got to be divine intervention somewhere for George's father to have been a chiropractor, his brother and other chiropractors in the family. And then how do we wind up not being able to find a lawyer to sue the AMA? And then George comes up. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, throughout the profession's career, Ron, there have been a, a, a number of marvelous things that I find hard to uh, make just coincidental. I honestly believe that we've experienced some divine intervention. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And well, let's go on. You know, you you recently in the last like three or four years, you know, you commissioned a book, right, called Contain and Eliminate. I bought a, a bunch of copies, you know, passed them out, handed them out. And it is the story of the Wilkes trial. And, you know, I and you actually hired the the, the reporter who covered the trial, right? Exactly. First, he was covering it for the, for he worked for the, uh, you know, for the AMA office, News. For the AMA News. Yep. And then they fired him because he, he was actually reporting the truth and that wasn't what they wanted to hear. And then he went to the Chicago Sun Times or whatever the paper was. But share how that came about, your vision around that. And, and well, what 
Howard Walensky um, was uh, the author of a book called The Serpent and the Staff. Yeah. yeah. And so he had a chapter in that book on on the Wilk trial. And uh, so uh, Howard was was actually, as you say, a fair uh, reporter, one of the few investigative reporters that seems remaining. But after after the Wilk trial was over and and we had gotten the response from the judge and so forth, a number of years had passed. And I honestly believe that the profession never really did pay George McAndrews the kind of homage that he really deserved. So I was hell bent. George was getting now up in age. He was 80, 82. He passed away last Good Friday. And so before he passed away, I thought to myself, you know what? We need we need to do something to commission a book for for George. So I I called George and I said, do you um, have any idea of who would be one of the great uh, authors of this? And he said, Howard Walensky, if he's still if he's still available and still wants to do it, he just retired. So he got me in, in contact with Howard. Well, the arrangement Howard and I made as it Howard, there is no interference. I want you to write. I want you to write uh, the search for Red October. I do not want you to write a dry history. And and basically, Howard uh, did a wonderful job. And fortunately, uh, George was a pack rat. So was I and a number of other folks. And some of the documents that we had in our files, I mean, in case you, you didn't know it, I, I, I am a pack rat. I've got I've got three rooms filled with filing cabinets. And we were able to put together that whole story of what happened with the Scientologists and and how the how the documents were there and as a recipient of sore throat documents and so forth, the story fit together perfectly and it was a wonderful story to tell and it was it, it honored George McAndrews and George participated in every single word of every single page. Uh, that's so beautiful to hear. Prior to, and I have to tell you, it, it, it's a movie script. I mean, truth. Yes, it is. It really is. It's a movie script because it just shows the 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 inequity. It shows the rise above. It's a rocky story, right? You know yeah, that you exactly. Know. It shows the depth of corruption. Yeah. And the and the limitless effort that the AMA would go to to destroy a licensed profession. I mean, you, you can't you. And if you tell people that, Ron, they look at you. In disbelief, because, you know, up until and remember about the time we're dealing with the 60s and 70s and 80s, when the AMA was essentially the fourth branch of government, nobody would in any way, shape or form think they would ever do anything um, unethical or or dishonest. Well, now we find out, of course, that they're in bed with Big Pharma and have been part of the creators of this entire issue of the opioid and drug epidemic and all of these issues that, that are out there today. So nobody has the same view of the AMA that they did in the 60s and 70s. No, and and and, and this was such a expose. I mean, I'm gonna tell all of our viewers, you gotta get I'm gonna put a link on the bottom where they can where they can grab this book. And and I, I mean I I don't know, I, I might have bought like five or ten copies. I wanted people to I mean, I passed them out, but it is something that yeah, you, people would think you're a conspiracy theorist if you if you talked about seriously exactly you about it. And George McAndrews, you know, I don't know if you know Brad Glowacki, but Brad did an interview yes. with Chester Wolf before he passed, and it's a great interview, you know. And and um and what what they were, you know, how they were the amount of energy and time that they put in, and what they did as defendants, right? Um, it was incredible, and it was a major victory for us, but. I think it truly, uh, this, this is my own personal opinion, it shifted the attitudes, because the attitudes of young medical doctors now are not the same of what they were back in the 60s and 70s, you know? No question. 80s. I mean, their, their acceptance of everything, and, you know, you, we, you can work with them, and, and, and they're, they're really into less medication, you know, these days. Um, but but it, it just shifted it, and it's just amazing that we did it. And I think we just got to just share with our viewers, because... You're going to read the book anyways, and you should. And if you, even if you know the Wilkes story, I knew the story. I, I listened to Chester Wilkes tell the story many times, right? Uh, personally, and 
I still read the book and it was still fascinating. And it was just great because there's stuff in there that I didn't know. But just share about Geek Throat because I think that they just are sorry throat. I'm sorry. They, they need to know that, right? Yeah, the 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 interesting part about the the um, sore throat documents was the Scientologies, uh the Scientologist people, uh they they had uh, L. Ron Hubbard wrote a book called Dianetics. He thought that the AMA was going to essentially um honor him and whatever on his book Dianetics. Instead, what they did was they tried to get the Church of Scientology uh, 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 lose their lose their accreditation and lose their, their their status. And so L. Ron Hubbard, not to be not to be taken too lightly, um, basically had an organization that was quite quite advanced. And so what he did was he infiltrated the AMA. He, he, he had some of the top uh, uh, secretaries go to the AMA, get hired. They did such a phenomenal job. They had a lot of trust. And remember, back in those days, this is before computers. This is before Xerox copies and all that. They, it was quite a task to go through and go. And so what they found out after a, a, a year or so was that their, the AMA wasn't really doing much uh, against Scientology. But what they uncovered in a in a almost an accidental fashion was what they were going to do to chiropractic, and so they got the the information. And so one of the Scientologists decided to wait a minute. Why why, why waste a, a, a good situation like this? They sent it on to the chiropractic organizations at about fifty individuals, and I happened to be one of the individuals they sent it to. And from there on, Ron, ever since that day when that brown unmarked manila envelope came into my office the weight on off my shoulders was lifted because i finally understood the context of all the things that were happening that i never ever ever would have imagined yeah yeah and the depth that the and so that so then the documents were out there and of course this is kind of the the legal piece of this okay so george says wait a minute these are documents we have to validate them. And so the validation of the documents was we had, the, George had a, a filed an action, and of course they have discovery. And in discovery, there's a, what they call preservation of documents. So the preservation of the documents at the AMA, they complied with it. They put all the chiropractic stuff in. And guess what, Ron? I know this is going to be a surprise to you. I know you're going to be shocked. <laughs> but the AMA told the court that the... They preserved all the documents, but the janitor thought they were trash, and so therefore they were all um, destroyed. Yeah. So that meant that George had to travel. Fortunately, they didn't. No, the the medical associations across the country didn't get the memo. George traveled to some forty states, I think, and traveled to the uh, uh, medical associations, and in their files were the documents that they refused to admit to. And so after George validated the documents, that became the basis of the case. Yeah. And and what people don't understand also, Rhonda, which is interesting, is that the, the Wilkes suit really wasn't all about chiropractic at all. It was about the economic boycott, the, the economics that the AMA was attempting to get rid of chiropractors by destroying their economics. And Dr. Miron Stano, who was our economist on that trial, did a marvelous, marvelous job. Yeah, and 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 it really was. But it was it was about money. It wasn't about chiropractic. What we do, how we do it. You know, it was truly it was a money grab. And, right. and it's just crazy. And you know, I, I don't know if our audience knows the, the gratitude because chiropractic. If that would have continued on, chiropractic. The reality is, it could have been wiped out. You know, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah. We would. There's no. There's no question, yeah. Ron, yeah. that the profession would not be here today if it weren't for the. If it weren't for what was discovered and uncovered during the trial documents. Absolutely, and I, and it will always be in my mind, embedded in my mind that that quote that I used to see that Dr. Sid Williams had that said there can never be an ethical relationship between a medical doctor and a cultist chiropractor, right? You know, and, and it was from the AMA, I think it was, I think the date was like 1966 or something like that. And, you know, this was their stance. 
And they were so hell bent on eliminating us. But, you know, I, I think it just comes down to the old saying, whatever doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. And, and we got stronger and we grew. And then our research came about and all the things that you're doing around the research and, and the funding that's taking place is, is amazing. I mean, you know, come on, over a million dollars a year that, that, that your foundation, that the NCMIC, that you're president of the foundation is putting into chiropractic. And, you know, it's, it is truly, I mean, it is truly incredible. And, you know, it's what we need. We don't have the NIH behind us, per se. You know, we have to do this self-funded. Hopefully, Lou, we'll get to that point where we have those. those oh, uh, there's no question about it. I mean, there's no question that, that that NIH funding is coming into chiropractic now because of the DC PhDs that are doing the research. I mean, just the, uh, Dr. Ronnie Evans and, and Gert Bronford just got $11.9 million grant from NIH. Right. So, I mean, it, it's coming. But, you know, you have an educational institution. And so think about this in terms of the hypocrisy and the absurdity. The AMA claimed that chiropractors were inadequate in terms of their education. Okay. So now here you are, Ron Oberstein, you want to hire an MD or you want to hire a PhD to come on your faculty to enhance the, the, the quality of the education. If that MD or, or PhD ever decided to, to come to your college, they, re- they would have received the letter from the AMA saying, if you go teach at Life West, you'll never teach again. Yeah. And so you can't call us stupid and then prevent us from becoming educated. Yeah. And that's exactly what they did on a systematic basis, regardless of what the issue was. There was this dichotomy and, and hypocrisy that just was unbelievable. Yeah. Well, that's the contain and eliminate. Exactly. It's literally what they did. They contained it's exactly it, what right? they did. And, then, and thank God, Lou, that, that that yourself and everybody else who was involved in it, you know, got this. Well, thing. as we uh, think about this in terms of the brilliance, I mean, you got to give you got to give them credit for doing a marvelous job in the attempt to destroy us. For example, the AMA. You know, there's what is there a dozen American Cancer Society, American Arthritis Association, yada, yada, all the way down, every American group. Well, the AMA wrote the position papers anti-chiropractic for every one of those. And then they said, look, we're not the only ones who are against chiropractic, the American Cancer Society. (laughs) So they wrote the position papers and then used that as their evidence to support the fact that they weren't alone in it and being anti-chiropractic. I mean, it's brilliant. And yet, it's so Machiavellian yes. that you can hardly get your arms around. Yes, and thank you to that judge. And Actually, Chicago. it's fun. Uh, it was fun. It's fun in retrospect. Yes, to be able to look at it, uh, you know, uh, Monday morning quarterbacking and look and looking at the entire landscape to see the the brilliance of the program and then how it was how it was uh, systematically destroyed after the evidence. Jo- George McAndrews had a famous quote. He said the AMA were historians with a death wish. Yeah. They kept the documents, never thinking that anybody was ever going to discover them. Yeah, yeah. And, but today, and- Ron, I, the, the interesting part about this is yesteryear, and I was up to my eyeballs in it. But that to, to, that's that's yesterday. Today, I'm going to tell you, we are in the most magnificent era that we could ever be in because because institutions because the healthcare itself is taking a very very optimistic look you're starting to see the term value based reimbursement you're starting to see non drug starting to see conservative care first which is what we used to say chiropractic first medicine second or surgery third that was we did that 50 60 years ago but that's the reality today. And what we're also finding, Ron, which is amazing to me. So I, I, I like I joke about this because I, I don't know how many of your viewers have been in practice for 60 years when I graduated. But I can tell you that when we were practicing, we couldn't even think about anything else except survival. So a patient would come in and I would notice um, that they're, they tell me, Hey, doc, you know, my, my, my blood pressure's down or I can, my digestion is better or, well, you know, I, I didn't give a damn about that. I was only concerned about what they came in for and making sure that I, 
had no way to put this all together. Here we are, fast forward to 2023, and now we're starting to find out that the comorbidities, everything from diabetes to indigestion to whatever, has a spinal component, and we need more research to validate the fact that what we do is we're just scratching the surface on the benefits of of chiropractic and the spinal manipulation. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know it. I, Lou, we could talk forever. I got we we, we I got to wind it down right now. But the the last question I want to ask you, and I want like maybe a, a sixty to ninety second answer on this, because because you could go for three hours, or you could go is fifty years, seventy five years from now, when you're looking down from heaven, where do you want to see? What what do you want to see in the chiropractic profession? I want to see chiropractors in every single aspect of health care delivery, regardless of where it's delivered, from private practice to institutional practice to governmental situations to the VA to the military, all of it, Ron. And I think we will. I, I think there's no question in my mind that as research moves forward, that that the value will be not only recognized, but will be incorporated. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And it is right now the VA, all the things that we're doing, the, the service, the, the armed service uh, members, they want chiropractic. They're they're begging for it. There's not enough chiropractors on the basis to be able to take care of them. Exactly. And, and now we're going to the VA that we're and we're literally, I mean, it's just it's phenomenal what the ACC is doing now with Anthony Lisi and and the things that are, and you guys are supporting a lot of that. You are supporting right now people going and getting their PhDs, you know, getting their masters in public, you know, public chiropractors and public health to set policy and do this. And Lou, we all we owe you and you know and CMIC our foundation a huge a huge debt of gratitude you know that everything that you're doing to be able to move this profession forward on an educational level um it's you're up leveling us faster than we could have ever got up leveled so thank you for that and and thank you for all the stuff that while you're trying to make a living and do everything you're doing and you're fighting the government you're working around the fighting the ama which is just like the government and doing all this stuff you know it takes a person a, a group of people who are convicted and and truly you know want to protect chiropractic and 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 what we have to offer the world so thank you and if you haven't if i haven't said it enough i'm going to say it a thousand times right now thank you thank you thank you um just awesome and I, and please to our viewers Pick up this book. Uh, it's great. I, I, Lou doesn't make any money on this thing. It's not about it. Just get this book because it's going to, it'll enlighten you. And it was one of the best reads that I had last year. And um, anyways, but Lou, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time in Pennsylvania. You, I don't know if you guys got hit with that big Northeastern storm or not. Yes, we did. Okay. Well, thank you. And, and I want our viewers to know every single day, Lou's in his office and he's doing work every single day. I mean, you know, uh, doesn't matter, you know, graduated in 62 and, and been at this game for, you know, 62 years or 63 years and just still at it, you know. So so thank you and and thank you to our viewers. Thanks for coming in day in, day out, week in, week out. You know, we drop these life leadership lines every other week. The opposite weeks are our Life by Life West, and that's where we have uh, many younger practitioners, you know, up to anywhere up to 20 years of age. My wife and I do those together. Um, thank you. And thank you for spreading this video. You need to send to, to three people. Send the link out because our your friends need to know this historical aspect and all the great things that are happening and, and where we're going. And uh, and Lou, once again, you, know, you dropped a bunch of diamonds and and uh, we really appreciate it. I always appreciate talking with you. And uh, the more I talk with you, the more I appreciate you. So, so thank <laughs> well, you. Thank you so much, Ryan. I only hope that I can live up to those standards of, of, of what was set by you and 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 others in your, you know, that, that graduated in the 50s and 60s as we're moving forward. Um, and everyone else, uh, until uh, I see you again on our next show, uh, you know, from Dr. Lou and myself, we'll, uh, we'll bid you farewell. Just keep, you know, loving those people around you, taking care of people, spreading the chiropractic story. And uh, and never forget that, you know, we are more powerful as a profession uh, than we were ever led to believe in the past. But we have the research now. And as we move forward, just keep, you know, working uh, to, to up level 
everything that we do and everything that you do. Okay. So uh, from Lou and myself, we'll say goodbye and I'll see you next time on our life uh, leadership line. Bye-bye. Thank you.